people to keep under a 35-hour curfew as Russia steps up its deadly campaign of airstrikes. The U.S. says Russia has launched around 1,000 missiles since the invasion began. And that is Ukrainians facing harrowing decisions about whether to stay or try to flee west. My next guest decided to stay in Kiev with her daughter rather than risk the dangers on the road. Christina Corbin joins me now. Christina, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. So let's talk about this. I'm sorry to, to be talking to you under these circumstances. I know the nights here in Kiev have been very tough. There's been more explosions and sirens tonight. So mm -hmm. how are you holding up? Um, I'm all right. We're all right. We're very fortunate to have, you know, made it this long through all of this and be relatively safe while being in the epicenter of it all. Um, but it's definitely overwhelming. It's definitely exhausting, uh, emotionally tolling. So, you know, hard to say exactly how we are. But Okay. Yeah, you're there and you know, we, we see the videos, right? That's how we can, re that's the only relation we have to this. So the videos of, of devastated residential buildings coming out of Kiev, it's heartbreaking, really. What has life been like in the city just through, over the last several days? Um, I mean, it's pretty dead outside. Obviously, if you're in the center of town, there are sirens going off at all hours. You're told to go underground or seek shelter. Um, if you're in safer parts of town, um, you adjust using your own best judgment. Obviously, during the day, you can go outside, but um, there is risk involved, so you have to be careful. So even like going to the store, you, you're always risking something potentially because there's things flying and falling from the sky. I've seen it with my own eyes um, and it's not the best thing to look at. <laughs> well, uh, look, the, the question many people you know, for you might have to be, so why did you stay? Why did you stay? So many people got out I and mean, you have a daughter, she's just two years old and you were trying to avoid having to leave at all costs. So tell me about why you made the decision to stay. Um, well, at this point, and even very early on, because so many people were fleeing right away, it's just the roads are so blocked, the border is congested, it's pure mayhem, even just trying to get across a border safely. Some of my, some of my relatives that did go, it took them six days just to get to a neighboring country, what should have been a six hour drive, potentially. Um, so just things like that and having a toddler makes it that much more difficult. And then obviously you shouldn't drive during curfew hours. So you have to make stops, um, account for potential danger. Maybe you run out of gas, maybe you run out of food. You never know who or what will be um, on your path when you're going. And it's potentially very, very dangerous. And you also tell us, so uh, Christina, that this is your home and you shouldn't have to go. Do you believe Ukrainian forces can keep Russia out of the city? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're doing a pretty fantastic job at it. Um, and I have strong hope and belief that we will hold them off. If Russia keeps bombarding the city and the situation in Kiev deteriorates even more, do you think there'll become a point where you'll decide to leave? Well, obviously it's a decision that we visit um, and revisit on a daily basis. Um, obviously we have times where we freak out and we're like, okay, should we go? But then we reevaluate and we're like, no, it still seems dangerous, we're relatively okay. But obviously if, you know, um, something lands super close to us or we feel that there's personnel that is not safe around us, then yeah, we probably will have to um, throw our bags in a car and leave <laughs> 100 because you just don't know i mean you never you don't know what you're going to experience when you leave when, when, as no. you're trying to leave exactly it could be worse than just staying but yeah uh, as i understand it's not just uh you and your daughter that you have several family members staying with you how's that been how are they um they're good i mean it's definitely different we've never you know been <laughs> huddled under one roof like this especially under these circumstances but it does feel better being together. Um, it feels a little safer knowing that we're together and not maybe spread out all over town and worrying about one another. Um, so that's a relief in a certain sense, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah it does. And, and look, 
you, you and the people of Ukraine never asked for this war, and yet violence is knocking on your door. What's your message tonight to people watching and or listening? Um, my message has pretty much stayed the same. It's that if it can happen in a, you know, free democratic country like Ukraine, then it can essentially happen anywhere. So it's just something I think people should think about. Um, Ukraine did not want this, like you have stated, and we're a peaceful country and can definitely happen anywhere, but we are definitely um, very grateful for all the love and kindness we've been shown from all the other countries. It's really beautiful. How much longer do you think you can hold out? Uh, here, in, in Kiev? Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll see. <laughs> day by day, I really can't say. Thank you, Christina. We wish you the best. You be safe, you and your family, okay? Thank you, too. Thank you. She